What's up team? A couple of trades being used in this one. I was just listening to listen to the pod they experience with um with Sabs and he's gonna do four boosts in a row. So that makes me feel a little less bad about the amount of trades that I've used so far because he's gone 12 and I say only used one in the first week, went double boost, so seven, now nine. So that'll be three less than him. I'm in a much worse uh, rank than he is. I think Justin decided the top thousand. So we've got plenty to make up with. Hopefully those three extra trades that I'm holding is going to be what, 40,000, 40 something thousand ranks in the end. So yeah, that's where we're at on that one. But I just found that... um. Found that wild. Has anyone else quadruple boosted or used three of their boosts or about to use three? Let me know in the comments as well. So it is double trade week and I'll show you those now, which is Brennan Piakura comes out along with Tain Tulpiki at 414K and 324. Eli Katoa comes in with Blaze Talangi. So I've gone the up down strategy on this one. Now let's get back into the team so I can explain why. So when I looked at you know, my center wing, I had an opportunity to get maybe a Joey Manu at that same price point, given I had about 656 in the bank, exactly. So he was an option, but then I look at that and I go, well, I could potentially get someone like him in the next few weeks or another center wing gun going from there. We also have Cleary to, to think about getting back into our side. I'm just currently starting Drew Hutchison. But my center wing right now with Holmes is my captain this week. I'm gonna go Vice Ponga. Hopefully that he can still score really well against uh, the Dragons in the wet. Um, but Val Holmes will be my captain most likely against the Titans. That's how we're going to play this one. No real clear standouts outside of that with Hines being uh, off with the bye. So reason for this, I got two gun fullbacks. My center wing is Lay Button Holmes. Hopefully a good game for them too. Roger and also Taylor May. I've placed Talangi as well as my fifth option. Then it's Strange or Burbo, whichever one you want to decide to choose from that front. So center wing's fairly stacked, and that's probably the big reason why I went for a 2RF. I also think that Ellie, with no attacking stats so far, for him to average 62 is absolutely awesome. Well, no real clear big attacking stats with tries, and uh, I believe he has a couple of line break assists, but no try assists at that, and uh, averaging 62 in that, which is great. He hasn't changed in price yet. Oh, he's changed, so he's played three games. Very minor change in price. So he's going to come into the side and he will move into the starting side, I should say. And we can make some decisions around. If we are going to be looping Ponga, then Joe Chan will come into the starting side. And then Bofa Moore is probably the guy that's that's going to miss out. Or I just you know pop the reserve tag on him. And uh, I don't play like a Lusik is probably where I'm at. At the moment, I'm probably going to go Blaze Talangi over Lusik because I'm frustrated by Joey and I've got him in fantasy as well. So we'll hedge that a little bit. Um... But yeah, Blaze two good scores for his 57 and a half. And uh, Joey struggling on that. Anyway, we moved to, yeah, halves. And it's no real, the only real clear option I was looking at in the half position was going to be the great man, Sean Johnson. But I'm about 7K short. And I would have been a fairly high chance of doing that if I had that money. Um, but Eli Katoa is going to be the play that really helps my 2RF position, which is, you know, is a little bit better now. I already had Kaipis, Paul and Karen who are in, who are in good positions this week. Both are more not great. Smithy's, you know, picking out a little bit. Got Pikura out for another week, week to three weeks, wherever it's going to be. So I, I thought that fixing the two RF was and improving that was going to be the best play for my side, and obviously get the cash generation of Blaze Talangi down there. And then you know, front row forward, it's it's in a solid position. I think at the moment I'm going to leave out Liam Henry. Probably has the least opportunity or the chance for attacking stats, whereas we know both are more can you know is a try scorer by by nature especially in 2022 Lustig has had a couple of big games already so that's why we're looking at him and then Totola I think the minutes are just going to help at, yeah, and be in his favor with Liam Henry maybe going back into the mid 30s to 40 type of score where we know Totola averaging 42 and a half can have his game near the 50 but can have his like 39 game as well and yeah has potential for attacking stats sometimes which we haven't seen from henry yet we've seen it from totola before so that's what i like to look at with my reserves and and who i decide to play guys is do they have some upside you know if they if liam henry comes out and gets the same minutes and totola comes out and gets 40 it's a 10 point difference not a big deal but if totola can get some attacking stats or if lusty can get some attack 30 compared to a you know the 40 odd that you could get from smitty's uh but lusty has the 80 and the 60 odd in him 
that Smithies doesn't. Yeah, there's that type of thought there. And then Kara and Lusik. So overall, the, the Eli Katoa trade-in gives me a little bit more balance in the side. I'm not boosting again, which is cool. Um, and yeah, we get through this week. Then we've got Hines coming back, which is nice. And we'll have to work out what we're going to do with Zach Labor. You only made a tiny bit of cash. Hopefully this Titans game is another catalyst for him to make money. If he doesn't go so well, he's on our chopping block next week. And again, it'll probably be a double trade kind of style and we'll work out what's going on from there. A lot of people worry about Tommy, but it's Tommy, right? Like he had an absolute shocker on the weekend. Yes, they come up against the Panthers. He had a shocker on the weekend and got 55. So he's averaging 69 and look, he's been very close to a lot of attacking stats. He's also had a couple of pretty average games where he hasn't got involved and, and dropped the ball plenty. So he has bounce back potential. We all saw what happened with Ponga and, you know, people trading him out. I traded him out in the head-to-head -head side. That didn't work out very well at all, given I got the trail. So you could trade Tommy for one of these guys, like a drink water or something you want to look at, but then, you know, he could come out and get 60-odd against the Panthers and then get 100 the next week against um, you know, against the Warriors. And then Drinky comes out and that's 60 and 100 is, is 80, right? And, and Drinky's likely to average somewhere around that 80 mark over the next few weeks. But then Tommy has a couple of nice games and you're, you're going to want him for that. So people playing the merry-go-round fullback, you know, situation there. It's not super ideal, to be honest, but um, like it, it's going to be, it's going to work out okay sometimes. It's going to work out poor in others, which you'll see in that. So that's when, you know, holding someone like Tommy, Tommy Turbo is like, well, that sounds like a no-brainer because he's one of the best players in Supercoach on a year-to-year -year basis. So that's my thoughts with him in that situation there. And that's my team. Heading into this week, we do need to start making some good ranks given we're in a little bit of strife at the moment with our ranking at 54,000. I thought it was in the 40s, so that's even worse. But um, yeah, we're going to bounce back. We're going to end up pretty good eventually. Uh, I think by this point last year, I was in the top 6,000, I think, something like that. So I can go have a look at the history in another video, but that's that. Let's move to the trades for the head-to-head -head team now, which had a good week last week. Okay, we're here with the head-to-head -head side and the trades that we've got running here Actually, Josh Curran coming in, Blaze Talangi coming in as well. So it's it's very you know small grouping of changes in this team here. I've used one extra trade, so two boosts and two doubles so far as well, just to keep you guys updated on that. But Satili Tupanua moving to the bench, that means it's it's game over for him in my side. I was going to play him and, and hope that he could score well against the you know, a Bulldog side there, but coming off the bench, it's not not the play. Josh Curran at 507. He's a you know one of the, the decent buyers of the week, especially at a good price there. And leaves me 106 in the bank to, to make some further changes. And you know, thanks for thank you to Jamin Salmon for his uh you know for his services. It's been it's been a fun time. And in the head to head team, I'm going to look for a little bit more safety. And that's where Liam Henry is going to still get that role. He has every opportunity to still hit 40 minutes. And uh yeah, gonna lock him in there. And then last is gonna have the lower. He's going to be the one missing out on the reserve in this team. Again, enough hedging is going to be the best play, but that's where we're at at the moment. Improving the uh, the 2RF is really good as well because my front row forward's great with Flegler and May uh, and obviously Henry there. 2RF with Ola Kawatu, Lane, Kaipis Paul, or Paul Pierce as uh, a lot of content creators are saying, just, which is funny. Uh, we love we love Paul Pierce from the NBA. But uh, Josh Curran, he becomes my fourth 2RF. So Lane... Much better pasture last week. Did a great job. Hopefully, he can do the same this week. We're going to hold on to Chan. Hopefully, he gets an opportunity to come back at some point. But um, And he's obviously an easy looper. Ugh, can't actually, oh, scratch that. I can't even loop him in my in my team. He plays the first game. That's rough. Okay. I'm just straight out captaining Val Holmes then, apparently. Okay. There you go. Uh, so, does that mean in this team, I can't loop either? Well, that's sad. Everyone else is playing. Didn't even think. Oh, Galvin. Galvin, we can loop Galvin. But Dylan Brown, so da, da, da. yeah, we can still do that one. Actually, that's cool. Okay, scratch that. We can loop Galvin in both teams. Whew. Forgot about Chan playing the first game. There you go. Uh, anyway, 2RF, that's where we're at. We're in a good spot. Smithy's not playing him either. Doesn't have the upside. Brooksy, hopefully he can do, can he hit us a 40 odd? Can he get some type of try assist or a line break against the Panthers? That's the that's the big one. He got 29 last week. The team was horrendous. Hopefully, he can have a good week. And then we get Hines back next week, and we can decide what's happening with Lukey. We're very much hoping for a better game against the Dragons last week. So it's a little bit of a, a regretful one. 
but we did need to you know make that trade to to try and get a win last week and it worked out well that we could end up getting a win in our head to heads so well needed that's for sure brown and galvin same situation then we've got Roger, Laybutt, May, and then Bostock, who did really well. So again, we'll, we'll leave Bostock in for the upside. He's, he's got more of that, especially into the Tigers as well. It should still have a chance to potentially score well. Blaze Talangi in there also. So yeah, we'll see what happens with my vice captain, who's going to be in the fourth game there of Roger, before we make our decision on um, yeah, what we do with Galvin, if we want to slide him in. But uh, Roger's my, clear, my only real clear vice captain this week. To be honest with you, it's a it's an interesting world. Like you go Ola Kawatu, but he has a you know tough matchup against the Panthers, which should be uh, yeah nothing nothing exciting about that one. That's for sure. We can't do Appy. Yeah, it's really only Roger I think that has the potential to go absolutely bonkers in the in the first bunch of games anyway. Before we have to potentially use that looper with Galvin. So Roger's the man. We'll see how he plays, and then um, but I'm also very happy very happy to be captaining. Drink water straight out, if that's the case. So he's the big upside play this week, Drinky. And we do need uh, Latrell to have a good one as well. Up against the, um, yeah, up against the Waz, aren't they? Yep, up against the Waz at home. Hopefully it's um, yeah, a solid day out for him and um, and he can do really well. So yeah, that's the teams at the moment. Still not super excited with where we're at, with where the, the squads are sitting. But yeah, I suppose Hines being out, it's hard to... Hides being out, Cleary being out, it's hard to be too excited about that position. Obviously, my fullback situation with Drinkwater, very happy with. Luttrell, hopefully another good game for him. He's still averaging 74 for the year, so people panicking on Luttrell after the last couple of weeks. Yes, it hasn't been ideal, but um, yeah, he's, an, he's a guy that can easily go nuts. He hasn't had any try assists or tries the last two weeks, and we're due for one of them, that's for sure. So that's Ted Ted team, guys. Hopefully, we can uh, go pretty well in our leagues coming up this week. We're coming up against, what, 13th in that league, 8th in the other one, and then 13th in my public league where I'm coming 6th, which is cool. And then, the um, yeah, the big overall leagues. I'm still in the top, almost in the top half for the coming at 41,000 overall, top half for, sorry, just outside the top half for beers and break evens. Just inside that for my private group, we had a few people struggling like me, obviously in that one. And then uh, just inside the top half as well for the inner community. So that's that one, guys. Thank you for being here for my trades video for the overall and the head to head side. And and hopefully that's, um yeah, it's all helping with you guys and, and what you would want to be doing in your teams there. Obviously, you know, the current one is a play on a little bit of points, but also, you know, money making, same with Talangi. And that's all we're hoping for at the moment with our head to head side, get some wins, get some point uh, cash generation and uh, hopefully we can sneak ourselves into a top eight. And uh, by that point, I think yeah, we'll be able to save some good trades throughout the middle part of the year and and we'll be fine. But let's just make sure we get some wins up at the moment before um, yeah, things get a little bit tougher through the buy period, that's for sure. So thanks for being here. See you in the next one.